Welcome to Stop the Noise, where small business specialists cut through the clutter to hone in on practical things small business owners can do to solve business challenges and move their business forward. In today's episode of Stop the Noise, hosts Brenda Thompson from the Better Business for Good Company and Ian Hopkinson from SEO company Mad Scientist Digital and marketing software company Terminology.Digital are talking with sustainability business strategist Lee Baker from Balance 3 and climate tech rebanding specialist Danny Rusbandini from Impact Labs about the opportunities opening up to small businesses as a result of climate change. Danny, I'm going to throw the first question at you. So what will your license to operate require in 2030? Mm, um, well, I mean, so we're talking about, if we're talking about 2050, emissions are zero. So 2030, we're aiming for, you know, 50% of where we're at now. And that's, uh, you know, it's a big target and it's not that far away. It is kind of far away. It's a few years, but it's, it's, it's zooming up on us. So, yeah, um, absolutely. Got, you know, as business owners, as consumers, we've all got a bit of a responsibility here to, um, you know, minimize our impact as much as possible um, and just be conscious of what's, what's looming, what that, what that, you know, reduction in emissions looks like and, and, you know, how we can, how we can make some inroads to, to actually starting to make some changes, make some impact in our, you know, changes in our business and changes in our behaviours in general. Yeah, I, I think there's kind of a tendency to go, oh, that's government's job. <laughs> so, so let's bring that round and, and bring my, my next question back to Lee, which is what's climate change got to do with business? I mean, why are we here? Why do we care? Isn't that government's job to fix all that stuff? Oh, that's a, a big question on so many levels. I mean, we have been brainwashed into that for the last 30 years. Uh, you, we've got to tell us, people have got to tell our politicians to tell business. But if you look at all the products and all the services, designed and made and delivered around the world who does that yeah every yeah, single you, one of them comes yeah, from business they don't yeah. come from government yeah. okay and unfortunately the they were right all now. designed they were all designed back mostly in the 20th century when we felt like the environment was an endless resource had endless capability to keep on delivering us more resources to make more stuff and endless capability which we never even thought about to clean our air to clean our water <laughs> to yeah. provide our food uh and turns out that's not true so the final part of the question is well who creates the step changes in the systems del that deliver our products and services if you look around at we're having this conversation on Zoom. There's probably people listening on in on a smartphone or a tablet. Uh, did they be, become a thing yeah. because some government somewhere decided that we needed better communication? No. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. But I hope they're getting yeah. some R&D. <laughs> yeah, and yeah I, I think I, it's they'll a, have got bits yeah. of R&D, but, but it wasn't the government it. driving the yeah. change. Yeah. Some smart entrepreneur sort of need that some smart inventor had created a, a, a fix for that problem. Yeah. And they, they took it to market. And, you know, we forget that Microsoft began in, I don't know, a college dorm yeah. or, a, a, or a garage. Somebody's or garage. Yeah. Or maybe it was Apple that started in a garage. <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah. But, but yeah. It's also, yeah. It's also cyclical, though, isn't it? Because then the business produces something that hopefully people will want. Mm -hmm. So consumers drive that as well. So we all have that cyclical yeah. responsibility. Yeah. Yeah, and, and another go, thing. Oh, that's government will tell us what to do is yeah. a total pop out. Yeah, 75% of, Australia, of Australians want more action on climate. Talk and therefore, charity. as businesses, we have yeah. a responsibility. Well, it's mm -hmm. not just it's a, a responsibility to the planet, but we also have a, a, res, a responsibility in terms of actually in that growing our business to meet that consumer demand and not just to sit back and go, yeah. it's not my job yeah. or yeah. that's not the way my products or services look. And, and also yeah. I'm, I'm hoping we're going to get into this. It's like, it's easy to look at a manufacturing company or something that makes something 
but it'd be really interesting, I think, as well, to bring the discussion to the service providers, the people who don't see themselves as, you know, like, you know, I don't produce, mach- I don't have machines, I don't mm-hmm. make stuff, therefore, what's it got to do with me? Mm-hmm. So, and, and I, I think a lot of those are smaller businesses, Danny, so maybe that leads to your question. <laughs> and and what, what are the must-knows for smaller businesses in this in this environment where business has such a huge responsibility yeah it's the perfect lead-in because this is not a this is not just a government thing and it's not just a big corporates thing this is an everybody this is an everybody thing right it's um some of like some of our our clients we deal with people who are sole traders right up to 150 people in the company and for everyone who we talk to we say you are part of the supply chain you are someone's supply chain and you have your own supply chain everyone has a piece of this and the opportunities for, um, you know, especially small businesses, this is, this is like we were talking offline, you know, just before we jumped on the call, um, there are software alternatives that are based in Australia, where the money stays here, where the, the, the R&D stays here. There are things like that that are not necessarily in manufacturing and not products and not physical things. There are things that we can all think about where our where our money goes, where our um, uh, where our people work, where they come from, you know, we keep everything within Australia. That's that's one way to to minimize your impact. Um, and you can you can look at so many parts of your business, like software s- subscriptions, um, like contractors, like team, and see where you're, you know, where you can minimize some of that some of that impact like there's there's low-hanging fruit opportunity is what i'm saying yeah I, I, it's about aligning on purpose isn't it like yeah. that, that, yeah. that's that's what i hear a lot of service providers talking about is that they're not wanting to necessarily work with businesses who aren't doing good for the planet yeah yes um, and a lot of customers of the, who don't want to buy from businesses who aren't doing good exactly there's more yeah. of that emerging so you look, like you're yeah. saying there's those secondary effects yeah yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. i'm also and thinking back to the webinar i did the other day about with the, with the cfos about budgeting and actually looking at where all your spend goes and and mm-hmm. looking at, at making that spend go to the places that are doing good so it's totally reviewing your spend every single regularly yeah and yeah yeah, so, yeah and without getting like too heavily into some of the jargon but um one of the one of the sort of easy areas that oh, just about everyone can affect is you know things like who you buy energy from, um, who you bank with, who you put your superannuation with. Simple things, simple changes like that, just moves money that's you know um, going going into you know building coal plants and fossil fuel mm-hmm. and weapons yeah. and things like that. Yeah. You can take all that money away and just put it into a into a um, more ethical fund. Yeah. So ditch bank A. Eh? one of those big ones and, and go to bank B, which is one of the, which is perhaps one of the B core ones. But yeah. yeah, exactly. And it would be great to have a list of those things that for your, that bookkeepers had where they could, when, they, when they're working with purpose-driven clients, and here's an idea where bookkeepers are working with and accountants are working with purpose-driven clients, they can actually go, let's go through this checklist and let's move everything we can move. That's right. Yeah. And that's the kind of thing you can do in a few days, you know, that's, that's yeah. quick impact. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. And so that becomes an opportunity for a bookkeeper or an or an accountant to guide their clients through their processes saying this is where your money's going are you sure you're happy with it are you sure you want to be putting your banking and paying fees to the same companies who are still investing in fossil fuels yeah yeah the other thing that's really important is to so very few businesses have any certainly smaller businesses have any awareness of the opportunity side of this. Yeah. Where are my opportunities? It's not all about compliance. You've got to do compliance. It's like yeah. you've got to have antivirus software on your computer. <laughs> but don't stop there because the good stuff is out in opportunity. Yeah. And I think that that, that whole awareness thing, because, yeah, I mean, I, I sort of think of myself as being reasonably conscious of that, that sort of stuff. But to have that list of, you know, move from bank A to bank B and, and do this, and, you know, yep. that would be so incredibly valuable. Mm-hmm. There are lists. Oh, mm. good. Okay. Let's there is a website, a but it's an American yeah. website. So ah. we could, so I'm pointing yeah, at this yeah. book, which has a, a companion website called regeneration.org, which has 
a growing list of things that you can do. And it has a banking and finance list oh. and it has not just think about where your bank is, but whose credit card are you using mm. yeah. and things like that. And yeah. so there's a great so opportunity think, yeah, yeah. to... And, yeah. Um, no, for anybody in finance that. to flip yeah. that yeah. and go, okay, yeah. I can put the Australian level of detail on that. Mm -hmm. Well, let's, yeah, that, yeah. That, that's a project. Yeah. There is, a, um, <laughs> there is an Australian um, version of some of the banking and superannuation as well called Market Forces. Mm -hmm. So you're able to um, see every bank in Australia um, and filter them by who has moved away from funding fossil fuels and who's investing in ethical um, wow. projects. And that's a that's a just makes it really quick and easy to go. Yep, that bank done. Bang switch. Yeah. yeah. So let's maybe we can put together a set of those kinds of resources in some way that can get shared to people who actually wanted to see this mm -hmm. webinar or who look at it in the future. Yeah. Make, make, perhaps we better move on to the next question that I had in sort of like the introductory section is what are communities and small businesses doing today? I mean, we've just talked about a lot of things they could be doing, but Lee, mm -hmm. did you want to did you want to address the some of the things you're seeing getting done? Oh, it's one. It's one of these things, if you don't know to look, you don't see it. Once you start looking, it's absolutely awesome. Uh, I'm, um, I have family up in the Beechworth area, and so I know about a group, community group called Totally Renewable Yak and Dander. They set up a group, it's just a little uh, out of their community development organisation that they've got up there. They decided they were going to create energy sovereignty they didn't go bang 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 renewables they said are you sick and tired of the power going off all the time we're going to create energy sovereignty so that we're in charge of our own energy and we create jobs locally using renewable energy and they started that back in 2014 and they started buying doing bulk buys of solar panels They've moved on to a local smart grid, to local big batteries, community batteries. They've got a community virtual power plant uh, because, yeah, they just got unreasonable. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and, and so that's a community example. Uh, I know a insulation installer over in WA who uh, has switched his business over to being a social enterprise. He insulates people's homes like he always has. He does a double layer of insulation to R8 level uh, and it, any profits that they make, they collect and then they use it to insulate a social housing property oh, for that. free, which means that they're making the world better because if you oh. live in the uh, well insulated home yeah. and you spend less of your scarce income on energy you're healthier because you're not dealing with heat prostration or shivering in winter yeah um and um he's got more customers than he's yeah. ever had before because he's got this brand where he can say well the reason that you buy from us is because our profits go to insulate yeah. social housing yeah. and, uh, and, and so he's paying yeah. himself a wage he's paying his boys a good wage he's paying all his insurance he's doing all his compliance he's doing professional development and he's got this really sustainable model yeah uh, but yeah yeah and, so and it's, that's... it's it's so beautifully cyclical because as he's putting the insulation into those mm -hmm. social housing then yeah. all of those good things are flowing onto mm -hmm. them as well so it's just this, yeah. yeah absolutely and then we've got your model. Your brilliant example, Brenda, of Fungi Solutions down in Thornbury, uh, making a replacement for polystyrene packaging by growing it out of, Fun out of the, the roots yeah. of mushrooms. Yeah, yeah. I yeah, mean, and, just that, yeah. and that's just an unreasonable entrepreneur doing something mm -hmm. that she's passionate about. Yeah. Yeah, it's there's a, a wealth of stuff happening uh, yeah. it's really good fun watching it uh, yeah, as yeah. Well. It's such interesting examples too because the um the insulation guy that's you know that's a really nice example of of not having to think too far out of the box that you already play in you know there's a lot of innovation the, the mushroom um packaging is exceptionally creative and innovative and it's probably a big step away from you know possibly what she was doing before, but the insulation guy just said, this is what we're already doing. 
how can we deliver it in a slightly different way? Just take a slight step to the left and how can we deliver it with a little bit of impact? And that just shows how simple it can be. Yeah. yeah. And it just happened because he got curious. All these social housing tenants ring me up for a quote and they never call me back. (laughs) Why is that so? (laughs) Yeah. Yes, of course. Okay, so I think it might be time to actually move on to to the checklist. That concludes the first part of today's session. Now it's time to open up the checklist where Lee and Danny will walk you step by step through a fundamental introduction to do list for implementing a regenerative business program for your business.